Hey OC Network here with another unboxing, this time coming from the company Azul. And this is another one of their fanless mini PCs, and this is specifically their Byte 4 Mini Windows 10 Pro PC. And inside this one, there is an Intel Gemini Lake quad-core processor. It is the 4125. So that is a 2 gigahertz processor that has a boost speed of up to 2.7 gigahertz quad-core and a boost speed up to 2.7 gigahertz. So that's pretty nice. You have Windows 10 Pro on here and it is capable of taking Linux as well. So if you decide to go with Linux instead for a more stable operating system, then you can take that road as well. It has either 4 gigs or 8 gigs of DDR4 memory inside and it is limited at 8 gigs so if you do get the 8 gig model then you're already maxed out if you get the 4 gig model you can always up always upgrade it to 8 gigs later on if you so choose but again you're going to hit a limit which is kind of unfortunate uh, 8 gigs would have been nice to have 16 but that is a limitation simply of the cpu that they chose so the processor on this is only compatible up to 8 gigs so you know, that's your maximum limitation there. But the one we're holding right here is the four gig model. So everything that we say about this later on, once we do a full review on this, will be based on its performance as a four gig model. Of course, we're gonna upgrade it to eight gigs too, just to see what the difference is. But the story will revolve around four gigs because that's what they gave us. And then uh, onboard storage, you have 64 gigs of eMMC memory. And it's a little bit different. Uh, it's almost as good as serial ATA SSD speeds. So you're, you're getting a maximum of about 400 megabytes per second. So it's gonna be way better than a normal spinning hard drive and just under the speed of a serial ATA SSD. And if that isn't fast enough for you, it has tons of upgradability, which is pretty nice. And really it revolves around the idea of adding a hard drive, not exactly upgrading because the eMMC is, you know, on board. So what you're doing is you're adding a drive and it has support for two different types of drives that you can add to this computer. So you have the option of a 2.5 inch hard drive. So that can be either a spinning 2.5 inch hard drive or an SSD. It is a serial ATA connection, so I mean, it's, it, you might as well go with the SSD. It'll be a little bit faster than the eMMC that's on board, and it'll give you plenty of upgradability because, you know, why not throw a, a one terabyte drive in there or a two terabyte drive in there? It's going to be affordable compared to the alternative, which is the second option for upgrading for the system, and that is it has an NVMe M.2 slot inside. So that two thumbs up right there. We love that. We love NVMe, and that, of course, blows serial ATA out of the water. So if you want the ultimate upgrade for speed, that's a little bit more expensive, of course, go with NVMe. Or just stick with the eMMC onboard storage, which should be fast enough for just about everybody out there, because it's not like you can turn this into an ultimate gaming system or anything like that. It's not what this is built for. And then, of course, you have everything else that comes with most typical mini PCs and everything that, 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 that Azul's ever manufactured. You have Bluetooth, it's 4.0, uh, you have Wi-Fi, which is 802.11 AC, and a slew of other features we'll go over in just a moment. Price point is somewhere between $249 and $326, uh, both .99 for some extra cents in there. But it all depends on which model you get, the 4-gig model, the 8-gig model. But they have all of these, they'll have all the links for this on their website, and we'll, of course, provide a link with that or for to that in the description so that you'll have access to that, as well as a link to the review, because we're going to go over this later on and tell you what we think about it, of course, at pocnetwork.net. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to open this up, we're going to see what it looks like, see what it comes with, and then we're going to break it open to kind of look further, because, duh, we want to know, what does it look like inside? But when you open the box, everything's nicely neatly packed in here. We got some documentation here and of course a little warranty card says, hey, reach out to us, let us know if you have issues. The computer itself is pretty similar to all their other models for the most part, except for one minor detail. It is a little bit bigger and it has some really good quality when it comes to the materials. I mean, a lot of these mini PCs, when we come across these, it's all just plastic. That's it. Just plain plastic, nothing too fancy. Uh, it's what's on the inside that counts for a lot of those, but for this one, Azul likes to focus on both the inside and what's on the outside. So what's on the inside? 
we're going to assume is pretty nice. What's on the outside is also nice too. It's got a really good design to the case. You got rubber feet at the bottom. You at the top, you have this nice spiral design that's that's filling the top with a nice big solid pattern here. Uh, you have a blue accent going all the way around, including around their logo, which is the power button here in the middle. And everything else is pretty much just like gunmetal gray. It seems to be a heavy duty plastic with some aluminum in the mix uh, for the bottom. The whole bottom plate is aluminum, which is quite important, which we'll get to in just a moment. And then you have some ventilation on the side here. So beyond that, let's take a look at the ports. On the front, uh, you have a infrared pickup here, a receiver, you have your button. On the right side, if you're looking at it, you have a lot of your connectivity for, well, pretty much all your connectivity for USB, but you have your micro SD slot that can be used to expand your uh, onboard capacity up to 512 gigabytes, although we wouldn't recommend that, we never do. SD is a lot slower than everything else, so if you're gonna upgrade anything, definitely add the 2.5 inch drive or go much faster with the NVMe drive. So this is really gonna be for if you're kind of transferring files from one device to this. So if you got a, a micro SD that's coming out of your phone, a tablet, a, a camera or anything else like that, you can transfer files back and forth by using that slot. That's the best use for it. And then you have a USB Type-C slot here, which is gonna be for USB Type-C devices for transferring data back and forth. It can be an external hard drive or it can be charging a phone. And then uh, you have four USB 3.0 slots right here, uh, all grouped together in two groups of two. And then you have the back. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory what this is. You have your two Wi-Fi antennas here, and then you have your AC jack and you have dual ethernet, then this dual gigabit ethernet connections here. And really the purpose of this, what you're, what the average person who is gonna make use of that uh, would use it for is the, this one right here is gonna be for your LAN connection so this is going to be for your network this one over here is going to be for power over ethernet so it can take power over ethernet which is pretty interesting for a mini pc that's kind of cool and then you might be able to do i mean dual gigabit connection so if you know how to bridge things together and uh, play around with that or just simply have two different connect networks you're connected to at the same time should work just fine you have a laptop lock so in case you want to lock this down you don't trust people around you you know Never know when shady people might come by and, and take your stuff. So you have that feature there. You have a display port here, which is a version 1.2 display port. And you have an HDMI port here, which is an HDMI 2.0. And then you have a VGA port because I, I guess that's, a, we're gonna call that a pity port. Anytime we run into a VGA port on a laptop or anything else, we typically call it now a pity port because it's having pity on those people that refuse to let go and realize that their devices from 20 to 30, 40 years ago are severely outdated. So the VGA port is, I might stretch it by 40, but, but the VGA port to us is a pity port because really who has VGA connections anymore? Unless of course you decide that you need to go retro. If you wanna go retro, that's fine. But that's it for connectivity here. You have four screws here that are uh, on each corner here and the four feet on the bottom are, are also screws. And, and normally you'd have to pry those off to get to the screw that's underneath is hidden. So it's usually like a sticky pad and or a little rubber thing that's stuck on, over it to hide the screw. It's not the case. The actual rubber feet are the screws. So you can just unscrew those to remove that and apparently throw them on the ground. <laughs> and, and then you have four screws back here. Now the, the top two screws here, you're never gonna touch. And the bottom two screws here, you will remove only if you wanna remove the feet, which means only when you wanna upgrade what's inside. And that's either the memory, if you have the four gig model and you wanna go eight gigs, or you wanna add the 2.5 inch drive or NVMe drive. If not, then you're never gonna open this thing up. Just leave it as is, don't take any of these out. But if you are, remove the feet and these bottom two screws here, which we are going to cover in just a moment. Before we do, we have just one last thing to point out, and that is uh, its ability for multiple monitors. Uh, now, it, it does obviously support up to 4K, and I believe for 4K monitors, I think you can only do two. I'm pretty sure you can only do two monitors, and even when you are with these mini PCs, we always tell everybody, Dual monitors and 4K is not always the brightest idea. You know, it depends on what you're using it for. If it's a simple use, then yeah, you can do dual 4Ks all day. If you are using this for anything power hungry or multitasking, then it is advised to cut your resolution down to 1080p to reserve those resources for some of the other things since you don't have a, you know, onboard awesome extended video card in here from NVIDIA or anything like that. It's just Intel's graphics. So it's good to balance your resources. But if you are going 1080p, this can support triple monitors. So you can do HDMI and 
and DisplayPort and VGA for whatever reason. VGA can support technically 1080, so you could go that route if your VGA monitor or device projector, whatever it may be, also supports that. But I mean, who again uses VGA? But on this side over here, USB, I'm pretty sure it'll do a USB display as well. Uh, USB-C, excuse me, display specifically, you know. So you do have the option of going triple display with this unit, which is always a plus because a lot of these mini PCs are usually limited to two. So let's take a look at some of these accessories really quick. We have, I mean, it's pretty simple. We have a power cable and then you have some screws here. Uh, I'm guessing some replacement screws as well as a thermal pad here, uh, which is double stick. And what that's gonna be for is the NVMe. So if you do put an NVMe drive in, you're gonna wanna put this on there because this will help transfer heat to whatever's you know, spreading that heat, which we all also point out in just a moment. But if you don't have this, you know, you're not really doing your drive much any favors at all. Uh, NVMe gets really hot. If you have the Serial ATA, the, the 2.5 inch drive in here, that's let it be SSD or spinning, uh, the spinning drive will typically get hot. The uh, the Serial ATA SSDs usually run really cold, so you don't have to worry about anything. You know, even though it's a fanless computer, you don't have to worry much. But if you have a spinning 2.5 inch drive, you know, just be wary of, of temperatures. You should be fine for the most part, but just in case. And then if you're using NVMe, absolutely make use of the thermal pad and uh, make sure everything fits nice and tight so this can transfer heat to what we're about to show you. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're gonna take off all of the feet now. Now we've actually already removed the two back screws at the bottom here. So all we're gonna do is just remove the feet, the three remaining feet that I have not thrown on the floor yet. And we're just going to remove the bottom. It just falls right out. And this little metal piece right here, this little bar here is what I was kind of, kind of hinting towards. Now where the NVMe slot is, the NVMe slot is right here with the screw here. So you just slide it in there, push it down, screw it in here. And uh, what the bottom piece here, uh, the metal piece right here, rests on top of it. I mean, it's positioned right there to spread across the top of the M NVMe. And you want to be able to use this. This goes in there, goes on top of the NVMe. This goes onto the other side of it, and that helps to spread the heat from the drive to the metal piece, this aluminum piece, fin piece here, and then spreads it from there to the bottom plate, which is all aluminum. So that helps just disperse the heat all over the place. Uh, so that the NVMe drive doesn't burn up. A lot of these mini PCs, if you don't have any kind of cooling for the NVMe, if it even supports NVMe at all, we typically run into temperatures of like 145 degrees. That's Fahrenheit. That's an incredibly hot temperature for an NVMe that you really don't want. That's too much. You don't want your drive to go above like 120 at worst case scenarios, uh, 125 maybe. Anything beyond that, you are putting extra wear on that drive and it's just better to avoid that. So make use of this. So that way it's properly pressed against that, that fin or that, that, that metal U bracket that's in there uh, so that it can spread to the bottom here and you're good. So it keeps that, that's, even though that the, there's no fan in here, that should still spread the heat enough where it hopefully will get the temperatures at worst to 120, 125 as mentioned, preferably a little bit lower than that. Now looking at the inside of this, it is very neat. Uh, it's very well manufactured. You have your memory right here. You have two different slots. So if you do upgrade this to eight gigs, you just put an extra four gig memory card in there. I don't quite know which brand this one is specifically, but if you look up that model number, you'll find what it is and just find a matching four gig chip to go in with the slot above it. So that way you can upgrade this to eight gigs, or you can just take that out and put two different four gig chips in there, or in our case, we have tons of 16 gig chips and eight gig chips laying around. I think we'll just slap a single eight gig chip in here to see how it performs. But it, it is neat and it's your typical memory slot here, you know, so you just hit the, the two bars here on the sides of two arms that, that hold it into place. You take the memory out if you need to put it in, you slide it in, just push down and it snaps into place. For the M.2, uh, you're gonna wanna move these two cables here off to the side. Again, you have your M.2 connection here and your screw here to, to secure it down with. And then you have this, which is your serial ATA connection for a 2.5 inch drive, which is such a plus. Uh, we've actually gone over that recently with another model that we were looking at that had uh, the, your typical little really thin and sensitive ribbon style connectors. Uh, which are really easy to damage. However, at least they provided it because most of these companies don't provide you with those darn adapters to break out to a 2.5 inch drive with. So they just tell you, oh yeah, it supports it, but then you gotta figure out on your own 
on what kind of ribbon do you need to put in this thing to make that happen because there are different approaches to doing that. There's different types of ribbons and you don't want to buy the wrong one because clearly it won't fit. In this case, they're using a much stronger method by actually using the proper wires for Zero ATA and that's a bigger plus. That is absolutely, I mean, that is, that's just an extra brownie point right there for Azul for doing that and we absolutely appreciate that. But that's it. So manufacturing quality on the inside is just as good on the outside as mentioned. You have your connectors. I mean, everything's good out of the box. You want to add a drive, it just slaps right in, you're done. That is a very useful feature. And then, of course, if you are cloning your C drive, which is on that EMMC to one of those other drives, you're going to want, to, uh, because it is internal, I don't think it is removable, um, you want to completely you know, format that EMMC partition to get rid of Windows or whatever's on there. Uh, so that way you don't have conflicting drives and or you can install Linux on there, dual boot maybe between that and uh, whatever other drive you put in here that may have Windows or another version of Linux on it. So you have a lot of options with this unit. Again, price is between 249 and 326, which is about common with a lot of the mini PCs that come into us. We see that most of them are anywhere between 200 and 350. So I mean, it has a lot going for it. There's very little that we can really complain about except for one thing, and that's the memory. We really wish it could be expanded up to 16 gigs of memory because we just, I mean, that's a personal preference of ours. Uh, but then again, we aren't the average consumer out there. We do kind of, uh, we are a little bit insane in some of the stuff that we do in the systems we build. So we do push our systems a little harder than normal. So for most people, eight gigs is enough. We do find that four gigs is not, not anymore. It's not modern. Four gigs was great two, three years ago. Now, I think that eight gigs, we all think, <laughs> and we've been discussing this over the last like five models that have come in from different companies. Uh, those that have eight gigs have really got a thumbs up from us. Those that have still had four just seem like they're kind of stuck in the old ways and it just doesn't provide enough oomph for Windows. So if you do get the four gig unit, you're probably gonna downgrade, or not downgrade, you're gonna switch, not a downgrade. You're gonna switch to Linux. Uh, because it can handle four gigs a lot easier than Windows can. Windows is just, it's its hungry. Windows 10 is definitely hungry, unlike Windows 7. If it was Windows 7, it would take it just fine. Windows 10, definitely hungry. You're gonna want at least eight gigs in this thing. So just buy the eight gig model outright, or if you think you can get the memory cheaper, buy the four gig, upgrade it yourself, and save some cash. So there you have it. It is the Azul Byte 4 Mini Windows 10 Pro PC, or Linux if you choose to put it in there. Uh, it is a very nice PC. Uh, again, it's competitive price-wise. We like that. It's got a good price for everything that comes with it. Uh, it's got DDR4 instead of DDR3. It's got a good processor in there. It has the Gemini Lake. I think there's, uh, I think between the models that they have to offer, they might even have, I th I'm pretty sure I remember seeing that Apollo Lake was in there somewhere as well. So there might be, you know, kind of an option between the two of them, but Gemini Lake is definitely the, the successor to Apollo Lake. So, you know, Gemini Lake. So go to the website at pocnetwork.net where we're gonna have a full review about this later on and we'll let you know what we think about it once we've given it a really good solid benchmark. And beyond that, if you have any questions or input that you'd like to offer, definitely make use of the comment section below and chat with us and share it with others. We'd love to hear from you and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. If you wanna stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button, click it. You're gonna to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button, click it.